What's up YouTube? Dan here and welcome to another episode of my AC Milan Grimo series. This is episode 13 and we're beginning today's episode with the game up against AS Roma in the Coppa Nationale and I decided to play this game, it's quite an important game. I think it's the quarterfinals, maybe the semi-finals, but it's still going to be a really important game and early in the competition we did actually beat Juventus so we got probably the best team in the league at the moment out of the cup quite early on we actually beat them at 2 or 3-0 which is quite a good result and I think we are probably the best team in the league at the moment because Juventus do have a really poor defensive three they play a three at the back they have Vidal at right centre back and that's not a really bad decision in my opinion because he's a better centre midfielder and they have got Marquisio at centre defensive midfield so they play a really strange formation they do play a 3-4-1-2 or something like that and Marquisio is like the centre defensive midfielder who never goes forward so they're not really using their, their weapons really up front really that much and Giovinco, Chiellini and all those good players are injured at the moment as you're going to see I think we play them in this episode or maybe the next episode and you're going to see the result from that but there's a couple of things I want to talk about and if we can maybe reach 10 likes pretty quickly on this video there will be the first episode of my Southampton career mode coming out later today there'll be a really long episode and most of the episodes are going to be around 15 to 20 minutes long because it's going to be live commentary it's really easy to edit live commentary videos a, a standard AC Milan video normally takes around 20-30 minutes to uh, edit and then render it takes about 10 minutes and commentating takes around 10-20 minutes because it takes a lot longer and Southampton all I need to do is record a lot of gameplay and obviously you can do live commentary at the same time and then just upload it cut out some of the boring parts and that's how it's going to go and it'll be a lot longer career mode as well no it won't be a lot longer but it'll be a lot longer episodes than the AC Milan because this takes a lot more time to do really so we get a penalty here against AS Roma there was a couple of chances in this game I didn't take all my chances but Royce decided to take the penalty and is he going to score it and he actually goes over the goalkeeper the best place to put the penalty is that perfect place you just put it over the goalkeeper and for some reason goalkeepers can't get to those on this game they could just jump up and get it but they don't on this game so the second thing I wanted to talk about is the England game yesterday. So I'm not a massive fan of England really. I know I'm from England obviously, but I don't actually really like watching them. But I decided to watch them yesterday against San Marino just to see how many goals they could score. And there was a pretty good performance and they actually won the game. I think it was 8-0 in the end. And sorry if I get that result wrong, but I only watched till like the 70th minute or 80th minute. So I think it was 8-0 in the end, but I'll go and check after this. So sorry about that. But the performance, especially in the first half, was really good. And I don't know why San Marino are bothering playing in this World Cup qualifier. But I don't think they should play because I think like all of their team have part-time jobs. They all work somewhere else. I don't know what jobs they have, but that's a bit strange as well. And they're like t their bottom team in the whole world internationally. So I don't know why they waste their time. It's a good experience, but I don't, it's just wasting time. And all the England fans and England players had to fly to San Marino and play a, like a really easy game. They're obviously going to get the win. And even the manager said a 5-0 win for England would even be a good result for him. So I don't know why they play in the tournament. And you can tell me what your views are on San Marino. But I'm not really feeling, talking of England at the moment, I'm not really feeling the, the England management on this game because I don't really enjoy it. And I don't know, but I probably, if I get an offer for maybe Brazil or Spain in the next couple of years, I will probably take that. But I'm definitely going to go into the World Cup 2014 with England and hopefully maybe even win that. But after that, I will probably resign because, again, we have a game up against Austria now. This was actually a really good game. I decided to play it. But again, I'm not really feeling, I don't really like the team. It's a bit too pacey and the players aren't too good either. Rooney, I know, but the rest of the team is a bit too pacey and the defence is really bad because I do have Chris Smalling. John Terry's retired. I know he's not very popular in real life, but I really do like Terry. He's a really good defender. So is Ferdinand. He's retired as well. So a bit stuck with centre-back options. I do have Cahill. I'm not a big fan of Cahill in real life or on this game, but he's quite good on my, on my team sometimes. He only costs around 500 coins, but not a big fan of Cahill on this game. So we Austria actually went 1-0 up there, but Lennon with amazing pace actually reached about 96 pace on this career mode, but he crossed it into Oxley chamberlain He's finished it off with a fantastic goal there. Not really fantastic, but a sweaty goal there in the 27th minute. Not much I can do, but England are really pacing. That's why there's going to be a lot of sweaty goals. So in the World Cup, or I don't know what FIFA call it, but I'm hoping to get at least to the quarterfinals because that's my main goal, to at least get to the quarterfinals. I don't know if we can beat teams like Spain, but it depends really. So they actually get a penalty here from a poor decision from Richard to go in for that tackle and you're going to see he actually gets a red card but Austria then get an injury here and they actually get a free kick which is the main part and the CPU don't score many free kicks I remember on like FIFA 09 and FIFA 10 I actually really remember but they didn't they used to score every free kick I used to remember and it used to be always very close but on this game you just see them going over the bar even from Ronaldo, Messi, Iniesta good free kick takers on this game but normally they just go way 
all over the bar and you're not, it's not really a, wor a worry if you just like give away a free kick on the edge of the box. But I remember on old FIFAs there used to be a massive risk of giving away a free kick on the edge of the box. But not in this game luckily and free kicks are actually quite easy to score and there will be a free kick tutorial coming out in the next couple of weeks because it's going to take a long time to make and I've got to get some gameplay as well on normal team and things like that. So we're actually 2-1 down at this point trying to get it going in the 90th minute. Rooney goes through and a really fantastic save by the goalkeeper. Austria, a really good team to watch here. Like they were a team to watch out really because they do have a nice team. They did score a couple of goals in that game and they actually won that game 2-1. And as you can see, Richards did get a red card in the 37th minute, so a really poor result there. But it's only a friendly, so it doesn't really matter too much. So Oxley Chamberlain game man the match with a 7.8, so not too bad. But never nevertheless, we're into our next game up against Udinese now. They have a quite good team. Muriel and Dina Tale were missing from the first team, which is a bit of a worry for them. I would play them. And I might at one stage maybe do a Udinese career mode, maybe on FIFA 14. But as you can see there, we're at top of the table by two points ahead of Napoli. And you're going to see over the next couple of games that I do extend my lead a little bit. Napoli are struggling at the moment, as you're going to see over the next couple of episodes. But over here you see Boateng with a nice ball over the top from, I think it was El Shirai. When it's the Boateng's path, he's not going to miss from there. And he's actually reached an 87 rated player. So he's gone up from an 84 to an 87, which is fantastic. So really looking forward to the future with Boateng. But I don't know, I think I should swap in the future. You tell me in the comment section. But on to the story about transfers. And I know a lot of you have been saying to get Neymar or Hazard. I think I'm going to go for Neymar. And I don't know about formation-wise, but there's not really any good strikers I'm really interested in. But what clearance that was from Kurt Zuma. There is Neymar, there is Jovetic, Pato. But you can tell me in the comment section. And I'll try and find some regen players, which are basically players that don't actually exist in real life, but FIFA put into the game. You can always find some good talent like... Players that are already like 84 rated and like only 19 years old, something crazy like that. I actually find someone like that in my Chelsea career, which I didn't do for YouTube, but that was really good. Hoping for more players, they normally come around in like the third or fourth season. And I'm hoping to do at least 50 episodes in this AC Milan because I'm really enjoying making the episodes. And I know I really respect your, your support for this episode or this series, sorry. And I'm getting at least 10 likes in like the first hour or two, which is crazy. And that, thanks for all the support you've shown. I've, I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it. Thanks for the support on all the videos. So if finishing today's episode with a squad report you're going to see how the team is doing and progressing so actually Kazuma got a man the match there and he's actually reached 77 as you're going to see in the squad report so as I said I haven't scored many goals in this series or this second season because Balotelli left and he's obviously our best goal scorer and Royce is actually on some rotten form at the moment he hasn't scored many goals since about, I think it was like the Inter Milan game a couple of episodes ago. He hasn't scored many goals since then. I think it was that game when he scored like two goals. But as you see, the squad report on screen now. So I really need a new striker. Just feel free to pause on any player you want to see in more in depth. And I have slowed it down a little bit. It's because I normally go through it a bit too quickly. And that's why I have to do it every episode or every episode or two. So Verratti 81 now, he's doing quite well now. Royce has stayed in as an 88, I'm happy with that because his potential is around 87, 88 and Ozil's an 88 but I expect him to get to at least a 91. That's his potential on footwiz.com, there'll be a link in the description below. Gabby Dean is a 71, happy with that, he has a fantastic long shot by the way. Gavakic did have a good start to his AC Milan career but has kind of drop down a little bit as you could say but Juan Jesus you're going to see him improve over the next couple of episodes. El Shroy does actually go up to an 86 and you won't see the squad report for a bit but he does actually go to an 86 so that's just the last couple of young players but thanks for watching and there'll be the first episode of my Southampton later on today so again thanks for watching and thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next episode.